Good morning, Holy and Whole family, friends. We greet you today in the name above all names, the name that every knee will bow to someday. We greet you, Father God, because you are excellent. You've always been excellent, and you're doing excellent things in these, your people. Father God, I'm excited because I'm, I'm excited because we're only two short weeks, uh, 14 days away from Easter when we get to recognize your resurrection. But that's also in 14 days, Father, we're going to be back together in Riverside High School. I'm excited because I get to see all the saints' faces again, all the friends. I know you all have been excited about coming back together. I hope you're just as excited as I am because it's been a long time since we've been able to rub shoulders and hang out and hug each other and all those wonderful things. I'm going to be really, really looking forward to that. And I'm actually going to be home that weekend. So it's going to be really nice. I um, greet you today again, again today, the name above our name. But for right now, two Sundays is just a little bit further away. For right now, we are going to celebrate and worship our God and Savior right here on Zoom, on Facebook, and our new platform, YouTube. Today, by the grace of God and his leading, I'm going to use as our introductory scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. That is the same Peter, if you're wondering, who denied knowing Jesus after walking with him for three years, but by the grace of God was redeemed by Jesus, who looked him in his eye and declared, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. If you really understand those short sentences, then you should be get excited because it's a promise. It's a declaration. It's hope. It means, yeah, we messed up. I know I messed up. I'm going to speak about me. I don't worry about the rest of you guys. You take care of you, I take care of me. I know I messed up. I know I've fallen short. I know there's some things I should have done, some callings and things I should have been, some places I should have been that I didn't go. And at this time, God looks on the inside and uses it in spite of us. He uses us in spite of us. So when we, we serve all the mighty, powerful God, a loving God who's working on our behalf. Okay. So let's jump into God's word today. Peter, 2 Peter verses 1, verses, sorry, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. And it reads as such. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for a living, a God, for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable us to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and more excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patience, with patience, endurance, and patient, with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection <clears throat> with production, and useful with, with production, love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, that sounds like one of Pastor, Pastor King's geometric equations. I had to push through that one. But at the end of the day, what he's saying is God is building upon tenant upon tenant. And if we apply these to our life, we're going to put us much, much closer to God this divine purpose and his plan. So at this time, my final task before I, before I would have a song from our uh, praise song will be none other than this prayer. So now I ask you to bow your heads with me as we go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you today, to break bread, Father God, to use the gift that you give us, Father God, the gift of your word, the gift of scripture, your living word, Father God, that permeates our very souls, our beings, and allow us to be more like you, Father God, because you made us 
in your image, Father God. We should look like you. We should smell like you. We should act like you. We should be like you, Father God. So today I ask that you would use the word, use your word, Father, to grow us. Grow us, Father God, that we may break through the earth and become the things that you would have us to be. Father, I ask that you would step into service today, Father, across man's made network of Facebook and YouTube and Zoom, Father God, use it to advance your kingdom today in a way that has never been done before, Father God. There's someone who's going to dial in today. Allow us to be the seed, Father God, that grows in their hearts using your word and your scripture, Father, that cause them to want to be more like you. I thank you for the Levites, Father God, that have showed up today. Father God, hours before the service ever began and begin to be obedient to your word and do those things that you've called us to do. Now, Father, rest on this service, perfect it. Then, Father, use the woman of God that comes forward and allow her to speak into our very hearts. I know you've spent time with her all week, Father God, and I know she's been in your word. Today, I allow, Father God, that you would allow her to move to the side and let us see you. It is these and all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.
give it up for my brother Moses Ago! Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Deacon Calvin Bostic. All right, let's try that again. Take two. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome. My name is Deacon Calvin Bostic, and I have the pleasure of welcoming you to Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministry where our senior pastor is Pastor Michelle C. Thomas. Uh, it, is, it is a great pleasure. You could have been any place else, but you have decided to join us um, at this House of Zion as we look forward to you joining us for this service. It says in Matthew 18 and, uh, 18 and 20, it says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So I say that to say welcome, no matter where you are, where however many it is, you only need to, but we're gathered in his name. So we welcome you to Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries International. Okay, my assignment today is to do a thing that we call tag, which is touch and agree. Now, You've been working throughout this whole week, and it's been a week since we saw you. So, you know, what we like to do with this is we want to, to reach out to you right now while you are in that little screen area there and just to wave and shout out and just say hello. We, we, we love you. We miss you. We thank you for joining us or whatnot. This is just that time just to, just to give a shout out to those folks. You don't know what they've been going through, what those struggles are, but this is our way of just saying that we love you and we touch and we agree with you. Now, the second order of business that I am so accustomed to doing is giving these announcements. Now, you know, I, I give announcements and I put a little spin to it. So get ready for these announcements. Okay, Women's History Month. Now, God put that rib for us to be able to share. So, but this is day month. So we're gonna we're gonna acknowledge this month by uh, a great person that I grew up watching, that I was inspired by, and uh, that is a uh, a great uh, person in history. And that particular person is Florence Delores Griffith. Join, better known to the world as Flojo. Um, she was born December 21st, 1959, and she passed at the tender age of 39, September 21st, 1998. Now, we know her as Flojo because of the things that she, her accomplishments that she did on the track and field scene. She set two world records, one in the 100 meters and the second in the 200 meters. During the 1980s, she became a popular figure due to both her record setting, her athleticism, and her uh, uh, eclectic uh, personal style. She was so famous in what she did that she was appointed to the co-chair of the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. She held that office from 1993 to 1998. Again, that is Floris Griffith Joyner better known as Flojo. We honor her with respect to what she did in the world of athletics. Again, she was a great woman. She was an inspiration and her, her legacy lives on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Resurrection Sunday is coming up. Brother Pastor Vic said it. We're gonna, we're gonna join you on Sunday, March 31st, 2024. We're gonna, we're gonna, resume our in-person service. That'll be at 11 a.m. at Riverside High School in uh, uh, Leesburg or whatnot. So again, Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, 2024. We look and we hope to see you there.
Okay, we advise all of you, if you haven't done so yet, is to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can see the link down there on the below. If you don't have the opportunity to be able to join us in person, this is just another avenue for you to be able to get the word and be able to look back on it or, or see it as it's live stream. All right, every Wednesday. Now y'all have heard me say this time and time again. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., we have our life application Bible study. This is where we gather to be able to dissect, go over the word that Pastor Michelle C. Thomas has given us on the Sunday prior. So if you want to understand how that's dissected, you want to come and join us on, on Wednesday at 7.30. But the, here's the kicker. We get to have our assistant pastor, Pastor Marion King. I mean, when I tell you she's dynamic, she breaks it down, she gives you assignments, she just takes you through it of where you can have a, though to be able to chew on it for the week to be able to understand what pastor has brought across that pool pit. Again, we, we, we ask you to join us so you can go over that word and, and take you through the week. All right, prayer warriors. We have a daily prayer call every day, 5 a.m., 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. If you just if you want to join in on the prayer call, the number and passcode is on the screen. If you just have something that you just want to be able to cast your cares at the at the Lord's feet and have have our leadership team be able to pray for you, you're more than welcome to join. Or if you just want to be on there and, and pray for those that are, are being prayed for, this is an opportunity for you to join the join again. It is 5 a.m., 12 p.m., and 8 p.m. Okay, our men's ministry meets every third Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, it says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That is the Psalm 133.1 of what we use. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact Minister Kamel Daniel at the number provided on the screen for any information in, for the men's ministry. Okay, my enthusiasm normally goes through the roof, but it's, it's Women's Month. It's Women's Historical Month. And we know our holy and whole life-changing ministry, our women ministry is dynamic they do a lot of great things they talk about a lot of good stuff and they they just do their thing if you haven't had an opportunity to join them i i recommend that you join them they they present or they meet every first fridays from 7 to 9 p.m they i mean they just do great things and i'm a little biased yeah my, my wife is in charge of that one. so i guess i i am a little biased but they do great things anyway Minister LaShawn Moore Boston is the leader of that. If you have any questions, please reach out to her. Her number is on the line. Okay, save the date. We got Mimit, uh, I'm sorry, save the date. The 12th annual Me Through God's Eyes Women's Conference will be June 27th through the 29th, 2024. Okay, this is going to be hosted by our very own Pastor Marion King. Again, that date is June 27th through the 29th, and it is me through God's eyes. It's the Women's Conference. Save that date. All right, ways to give. Time to sow those seeds. The things that Holy and Hold does in the community, the things that we do for you know, uh, different people, folks, opportunities, projects. It has to have some life. And the way that life is given is by your, you sowing a seed in this ministry. There are different ways to give. 
We have them listed on the screen. You have the holyandhold.org way to donate. You have PayPal that you can donate. You can text to give with the number on the screen. And our pastor's favorite is Cash App, which is dollar sign HWLCMI. These are ways that you can sow into this ministry so it can continue to grow. There's big things that's happening, big things that's on front. There's the things of new. And it takes, it takes a village to help that stand up. So we're asking you to sow your seed. These are your announcements, and we please govern yourself accordingly. I now return you back, Brother Pastor Dave. Thank you so much, Deacon uh, Vastic, for the announcements for today. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to jump on board of, of those announcements and reiterate that, yes, we are coming up just a few short weeks from Easter Sunday. If you have not communicated to that to your friends, family, and associates, please do so. I've had a few people reach out to me about where we hold our services at, so I'm beginning to push that out. As our members, family, friends, or believers in God, we need to make sure that the house of God is full on Easter Sunday, uh, which typically is not an issue. People always find a way to get to church on Easter Sunday and on Mother's Day. Um, so, But you need to be prayed for, prayed over for your every day of your life. So let's not use that as an excuse to only show up on those two days. However, with that coming up, we do solicit all of the members and family and friends and those that are dialed on by way of Facebook. And yes, we're going to continue to use our social media platform, I understand, during the service, but that's not an excuse to not show up and be in the presence of God in the, in the building with all the believers. You should find your way out there so you can grab a hold of someone, hug them. You hadn't seen them and loved on them in a long time. So I'm looking forward to that opportunity to see our pastor in the house. I know God's been talking to her. I know she's on fire, and I'm going to be close enough to get lit myself. So I'm excited about it. Thank you so much for the announcement. The women in, of uh, Holy and Holy are doing some phenomenal things. It's amazing how much things those women do on top of being the, the probably the number one jobs in their life, and that's mothers. So I, I salute salute each and every one of those women that are doing so many things, especially this month, uh, Women's Month. You know, uh, just sometime when I was a small kid, I used to always go hunting with my, my uncles, and they would always take me out through the woods. And some of the things I figured out from them, they're so much applicable right now within the within the holy and whole framework. You know, we would go out hunting, they would always say, you know, they, they would say, Vic, if you see the size of a footprint of an animal, you can tell how big the animal is, how big, how big the footprint is, and how deep it is. That's, that's, that's the dichotomy for holy and whole. The things we're doing in this community, you look at our footprint and it's massive. You walk into the building, you realize God could take a remnant. He can cut 3,000 down to 300 and do what Gideon did in the body of believers. And that's what the Holy and Whole has been doing in this community for over 15 years. It is amazing the footprint that we're leaving. And that said, one of those people who was a, contrib a major contributor of that footprint in honor of this Women's Month is our next speaker. She's not other than our, our very own assistant pastor, Marion King. But not only is her footprint here in Loudoun County, her footprint extends all the way down to Surrey County. I don't know how she gets it all done. As I alluded to earlier when I read the scripture, there were so many if-then statements in there. And on top of her being an assistant pastor at Holy and Whole right here in Loudoun County, County. She's the head pastor in Surrey County, and she's a math teacher. So when I read that scripture, it found it looked like one of her geometric proofs. I've done a lot of those back in my day, and I tell you, at the end of the day, no matter how you solve it, God is still in control. God is still over our lives. So you're going to hear a mighty woman of God come forward in just a few moments after one last election. What you're going to get is a teacher of teacher. A woman, a woman of women who have always poured into us, who's going to be there day in and day out to preach the true, unadulterated word of God in season and out of season. Whether you like it or not, she's going to leave the truth on your doorstep. It is your decision whether or not you want to pick it up and run with it. So the next voice you hear will be none other than our very own pastor, Mary King. God bless.
Bless the name of the Lord. Good morning and greetings. Welcome to our worship service here at Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries. I am Pastor Marion King. Listen, I was just listening to the message in song just before um, the mic was turned over to me and I began to consider just what an open heaven means. Watch this. Um, an open heaven, uh, when heaven is open, uh, it suggests that rain is going to come uh, heavily, uh, suddenly and heavily. And so what does that mean where we, the saints of God, are concerned? Listen to this. Um, it's a divine portal whereby which God will shower down joy. He'll shower down peace. He'll shower down love. He'll shower down hope. Uh, he'll shower down help. He'll shower down whatever it is you need. And so whatever you're standing in need of on today, we want you to know before we go any further that we're standing under an open heaven. Whatever you need, just reach up and God's got it. Whatever uh, your heart desires, reach up and God's got it. Whatever uh, your circumstance is, reach up and God's got it. Whatever uh, your home, your house, your family, your children, your spouse needs, reach up. God's got it. Hallelujah. We're standing under an open heaven. Good God Almighty. We greet you in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, who by appointment is the Christ. Uh, as you have been taking this journey with us, we have been traveling through uh, the book of Deuteronomy. And today you're going to find us in chapter number six, um, which you get your devices out, uh, whether it's uh, physical, your physical Bible or whether it's on your phone, or on your tablet, uh, get something so you can read along with us uh, in the word of the Lord for today. Amen, somebody. Bless God. Bless God. We Amen. You. Uh, Amen. We, we have some guests with us. We have some family members with us. And those of you who are joining us by way of Facebook, we honor God for your presence on today. And we count it a blessing to worship with you. Amen. Listen, Amen. in the book of Deuteronomy, I am going to be reading from the uh, New Living Translation. Uh, we invite you to read along with us with that, whatever translation is available and or is comfortable uh, for you to follow along. We're going to begin reading at verse number one. Uh, the word of the Lord reads on this order. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Let me say this again. Listen, you must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Uh, listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Uh, then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Verse number four, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the door do doorpost of your house and on your gates. And thus is the reading of the Lord. Come on and bow your heads with us. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. 
and we give you glory. We thank you for this another day and another opportunity to come into this place of worship. We thank you because we sense your presence is already here. Now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would simply uh, show up in a sure and powerful way, that you would show up and you would give us understanding according to your word, cause us to have this testimony when we leave, that it was good for us to have been here. We give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. It is in the name of your precious son, Jesus, that we lift this prayer. And the people of God said, amen. 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 To God be the glory. Listen, um, we, we have the backdrop of chapters one through four, and we know that this is a reiteration of uh, the commandments that God has given his people. We know that Moses is going over uh, the law with them uh, to stress certain things and to make sure that this generation is not operating uh, in a, an ignorant fashion, to make sure uh, that they're ready to uh, not just cross over into uh, the promised land, but to possess it. Uh, in order to possess something, it means that you have to be active uh, with whatever it is. You have to uh, uh, set up uh, a permanent dwelling there. You have to, when you possess a thing, you have to put your signature on it. When you possess a thing, you have to um, have relationship with it. When you possess a thing, you have to leave your mark on it. And so before the children of Israel can uh, cross over into this promised land and possess it um, and occupy it, uh, they must be reminded of some things, some things that took place with their forefathers, some things that took place with their ancestors, some things that uh, some of them, because of their age range, uh, witnessed on the tail end of, and some uh, did not get a chance to witness, but they were stories. And to them. And so Moses is, is drilling down on the fact that no, it's not a story. This is your heritage. This is uh, what is going to save your life. This is how you need to operate in the promised land. This is important. This carries with it blessings or cursings. This you have to pay attention to. And so as he's going through, uh, when we get to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number six, uh, we notice in the first nine verses that uh, certain things are happening. In verses one through three, uh, he's instructing them about keeping God's commands. And then in verses four through nine, uh, he's talking to them about teaching these commands to their children. And so when I began to look at the lump sum total of what's happening in Deuteronomy 6, watch this. Uh, the overall message in Deuteronomy 6 is uh, that it is a call uh, for wholehearted commitment. And so if anybody asks you what Pastor King preached about today, uh, just tell them she preached about the call uh, to wholehearted commitment. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. And so as we uh, begin to look at this message that Deuteronomy 6 is putting out there, um, we realize that uh, it is the love and reverence of God uh, by keeping his commandments and passing uh, them on to generations that follow. And so when we get all of this together, when we get an understanding of this, when we come to a point that we have fully embraced it, when we come to a point that we fully understand uh, what the Lord is saying to us, then we understand uh, why uh, we need all of this training, all of this reteaching. Uh, we need it before verse number 10 verses 10 uh, through 13, and you can read it in your leisure. Uh, we might get to it before we leave. It tells the why. Listen, um, it's, it's important to know what we're doing. It's important to know how we're doing a thing, but it is also important to know why we're doing it because the why is the driver. 
the why will drive us uh, to a point of commitment. It'll drive us to a point of intentionality. It'll drive us to a point of uh, not making the plan our own, but following after uh, the directions of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it is the why in verses uh, 10, 13 that these 10 through 13, that these first nine verses are setting us up. And so uh, let's let's look at the scriptures. Um, we, we want to uh, look specifically at one through three, and then we want to look at four and five, and then we want to look at six through nine. In verses one through three, uh, Moses is, is, is giving um, introduction to what he's going to say. But the meat of the matter, the meat of what's happening, uh, the how we're going to keep uh, his commands or the how of, of, of becoming wholeheartedly committed uh, rest in verses four and five. Go there with me if you would. Um, I contend that uh, verses four and five answer this question. What does it take to love a God with all our heart and with all our soul? And this scripture says with all our strength. Uh, when we look at Matthew 22, uh, verses 37 through 38, that scripture says, Jesus um, said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And so if you recall uh, how the Ten Commandments were uh, working with us, what they were instilling in, in us, what they were uh, putting in us, um, we can sum it up in two commandments. Uh, this is the first and great commandment to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And then verse 39 says this, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And so if you uh, remember how uh, Pastor Michelle broke those Ten Commandments into two parts. Um, one through four uh, dealt with uh, the facing uh, God and what it is, how we were supposed to reverence him. And then five through 10 dealt with uh, treating mankind. And so those two can be sum summarized and summed up in these two commandments, thou shalt Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And then uh, to follow it up with verses 5 through 10, and the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, in short, don't do anything to your neighbor that you won't, wouldn't want done to yourself. Can we, can we just put it right there? Just plain talk for this Amen. morning. Amen. I don't hear the amen. 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 I, I, come I, I through. Can be come through. By myself. This scripture has been encouraging to me on this morning. And so let's look at this. Um, what does it take uh, to love God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our strength and all our mind? Well, uh, the heart is, is the center of all emotions. The soul as we know it is uh, that life-giving entity that comes from God. Uh, our strength is the ability to prevail. And our mind is the summation of our thoughts. And so watch this. In order to uh, love God like this, with, with the way we've been commanded according to scripture, we got to have four things, write them down. There must be fidelity of heart. What's fidelity, Pastor King? I'm glad you asked me. Fidelity is faithfulness to a person, to a cause, or to a belief. In other words, fidelity is demonstrated by continuing loyalty. That, that you, you know I teach math, and so uh, this may give you a visual if I have any math brains out there. Um, I, I teach the subject of trigonometry. And in trigonometry, uh, we deal with six basic functions where the three main ones are cosine, sine, and tangent. And so there's something unique about uh, the graphs of sine and cosine. They look like um, 
a, a, a um, echocardiogram. They look like um, a continuous wave. There's no break in it. And so both of those graphs look the same. One just generates from the origin and one generates from a point on the y-axis. However, watch this. A tangent is this kind of a function. Uh, the tangent function has breaks in it. There are points where a tangent is undefined. Well, this is what we know about uh, love, that uh, fidelity of the heart. This kind of fidelity is continuous. There's no break in it. There's nothing that can cause it to break because it is continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. What does that mean, Pastor King, in non-math terms? From uh, the beginning of time, which we knew not of, to the end of time, which we possibly will not be here. And so love, that kind of love is uh, continuous. It has no breaks in it. It has no uh, dents in it. It does not, the wave of it is consistent. If it's a tall wave, it's consistently tall the whole way through. If it's a short, fat wave, it's consistently a short, fat wave all the way through. So this is what we know. This is how we can characterize a fidelity of heart, that it is a love, listen, uh, that is not broken. It is a love that is consistent. It is a love that uh, is, is not uh, hindered by circumstances and issues and, and, and conditions of life and, and of, of people and things and places. It is a sure love. And so, uh, number one, uh, fidelity of heart. Number two, uh, what must uh, happen? What must take place? Um, a singleness in mind. In other words, we can't be double-minded. The totality of our thoughts must always point to God. In other words, God is the reason why we understand what love is in the first place. We are uh, the, the evidence of his love in the earth. And so uh, with singleness of mind, then we would operate, watch this, we would operate from this vantage point that I can love you the way I should love you because I understand the love that God has for me. And because I understand and I receive and I embrace that love, then that enables me to be able to give it out. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Bless, the name of yes, the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Okay, so number one, um, there must be fidelity of heart uh, in order for me to love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. Uh, there must be a singleness of mind. I cannot be double-minded. Um, I cannot uh, love God when I'm getting my way and, and hate on God when I'm not getting my way. Uh, plain talk, uh, I must be consistent in the way I love him. Uh, number three, there must be an acknowledgement of who our life-giving source is. And along with that acknowledgement, we've got to embrace that fact. Uh, I believe that our behavior, uh, the behavior of the saints, the behavior of those of us in the kingdom would improve if we actually embraced who our life-giving source is. If we didn't think that society was our life-giving source, if we didn't think that the job was our life-giving source, if we didn't think that our bank account was our life-giving source, if we didn't think that our husband, or our wife was our life-giving source, then I believe we would embrace the gift of life and who it is that gives us that gift. And as a result of embracing it, we would act better. Tell your neighbor, it's time for the church to act better. Amen, somebody. Bless Amen. And righteous name. Okay, so number one, uh, there must be fidelity of heart. Number two, there must be singleness of mind. Number three, there must be an acknowledgement and an embracing of who our life source um, or who is our life-giving source. And number four, there must be a prevailing of truth when temptation appears. Listen, living this life, 
I don't care how saved and sanctified and going to heaven and how you are, temptation will come. Situations will come. But if we would embrace the truth, if we would hold steadfast to the truth and let the truth of God prevail in our lives, let the truth of his word prevail in our hearts, then we can send temptation on its way. We can send temptation packing, but we got to have something to work with. We can't just do it in our own strength. We got to be working with something. And the thing that we're going to work with is the fact that the word never lies. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Bless the name Hallelujah. of Hallelujah. And so what am I saying about uh, answering this question of how do I do this thing? How do I love the Lord like that? How do I love him with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, with all of my strength? Listen, five things. Our love for God must be sincere. It must be strong. It must be superlative, which means it must be above anything else we love. It must be intelligent and it must be entire. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. Bless his holy and righteous name. And so uh, that, that, that helps us with understanding how uh, to do this. And so that's going to get us along the way of uh, taking care of ourselves initially before we become the teacher, before we embark upon this task of teaching our children, whether they are children we birth, whether they are children that have attached themselves to us, whether they are children that God has placed on our path, whether they are children, they are babes in Christ, whomever they are, when they come, we have to be ready uh, to teach them. And so here's the second question. How does that happen? How do we teach? Commitment to our children. How do we teach and wholehearted commitment? Because we can teach half-hearted commitment just by halfway uh, handling life, by halfway loving God, by halfway observing his um, His precepts and, and his laws. We, we do that. But how do we do it? Uh, how do we teach them uh, to love God and observe his laws um, with wholehearted commitment? I got four things. In verse six, verse six says this, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands. So number one, you must first be, you must be first partaker. How are you going to teach a thing that you don't observe yourself? Can we just do plain talk this morning? This is not, this is not the path that says, do as I say, not as I do. That's detrimental to the lives of our children, to the lives of generations that's coming after us, because they will always see a split screen. They will see a screen where, well, she said this, but she did that. Well, he said this, but he did that. No, no, no. We want to give a clear and concise message of what this looks like. So we must be first partakers of what the word says. Amen, somebody. Amen. Bless everybody Amen. in the room on this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Right, so number one, we must be first partaker. Number two um, comes out of verse seven. Verse seven says, repeat them again and again at home, on the road, uh, going to bed, getting up. Just repeat them over and over. And so number two is uh, your teaching must be intentional. It must be consistent and it must be repetitive. Your teaching must be intentional. It must be consistent and it must be repetitive. In other words, we cannot give a mixed message. You know how it is when uh, we are a little upset with someone or something 
and uh, we're questioned about uh, it in the moment, in the time when we're upset. Uh, our glowing review has a bit of a shadow or cloud cast over it because we are a little upset. Well, in our teaching, listen, listen, in our teaching about a wholehearted commitment, it doesn't matter what life is dealing at the moment. It doesn't matter if we have seen uh, what we desire to see by this point in life. It doesn't matter if all is well with every situation, with the job, with our relationship. None of that matters. What matters is what's the truth? The truth is that God is God. What's the truth? The truth is that he loves us past understanding. What's the truth? The truth is that there is no one that can heal, save, or deliver but God. What's the truth? The truth is you can depend on him whether you're mad or sad, whether you're happy or glad, whether you're sick or well. Amen. You can depend on him. He has consistency with what he does. And so our goal, our strive then would be as consistent as we take this journey through life, as we move throughout life, helping our children and teaching our children, not just through word, but through deed, because our actions teach as well. What kind of teacher is that that can only quote the rule and not live the rule? Amen, amen. And so we've got to be able, listen, listen, we've got to be able uh, to drive it home by causing the word to seem possible to do. And so what does that mean, Pastor King? That means that we got to die to self and live to Christ. What does that mean, Pastor Christ? That means that we got to pull off our will and put on his will. What does that mean, Pastor Christ? Pastor King, that means that we've got to uh, make God priority. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somewhere in the Hallelujah. Word, I read that if we, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, but if we uh, seek God, if we go after him and what's pleasing to him, that everything else will be added unto us. So if we make his plan and his uh, way and his agenda, our priority, the other things that are our desire, he'll take care of that. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so if we so would true. trust to operate in that vein, if we would trust to trust him like that and put off our agenda, put off our will, put off our desire for his will. He'll take care of the rest. Because some reward, listen, some rewards we're going to get here. There's a great reward when we cross over on the other side. But as a child of the king, every reward I see won't be when I cross over to the other side. If I live right, if my behavior is right, if I seek him right, I'm going to see some good things on this side. I'm going to oh, see no. some reward on this side. Some of what I desire, I'm going to get the opportunity to experience on this side. Yes, sir. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so listen, 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 listen. So we must be first partaker. We must, our teaching must be intentional. It must be consistent and it must be repetitive. Number three, out of verse eight, verse eight says this, tie them on your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Now, back in um, Old Testament days, there was a, uh, a, uh, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but it was a little box um, and they would tie it as a reminder around their head. They would tie it as a reminder around their wrist and their hand. 
And so we're not saying that we need to uh, get a little gift box and put the scripture in and tie it around our head and walk around strange and unusual among society. But what we are saying is this, number three, keep the word before your eyes. Keep it before your eyes. We must have it ready to use at all times. We must have it ready to access at all times and in every situation and upon every occasion. Well, how does that happen? It happens when the word is in our mouth. Well, how does that happen? It happens when it's in our belly because we bring up what's on the inside of us. Amen, somebody. Just like when uh, when something doesn't settle right on your stomach and, and you begin to bring up uh, what's on the inside, uh, not to make anybody sick, but you bring up what's in there. Uh, when we get pushed into a corner, if the word of God is not in us, it's not the word of God that comes out of us. And so when, as we're going through this and as we're teaching as we go, teaching uh, in word and teaching in deed, teaching by demonstration, we must have the word uh, deep within our belly so that when situations occur, instead of cussing, we praise. So when situations occur, Instead of pointing the finger and placing blame, uh, we give God glory and we ask for forgiveness for our part. Because in every situation, I know you're innocent. I know you didn't have anything to do with it. I know they started it on their own. I know they created it out of nothing. I, I understand. But just in case you're one of those who will accept responsibility for your part, understand that your part is significant even if your part was silence. Amen. Amen. Your part was significant. Even if your part was avoidance, your part was significant. Even if your part was rolling your eyes. So I didn't say anything, but you rolled your eyes. You reset your eyes. Thank you, Minister LaShawn. You reset your eyes to the other side of your head. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but your part is significant. And so what we have to understand is if we keep the word before our eyes, if we do everything we can do, if we hide it in our heart, if we absorb it that is in our belly, that when uh, situations happen, when life is lifing and things turn upside down, that the first thing that comes out is a glory to God. The first thing that comes out is a, oh, bless his name. The first thing that comes out is a give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I may have told you this story before. Um, a couple of years ago, I keep a microwave in my room because it, it's tedious. Leaving your room, finding a microwave, heating your lunch, coming back to your room to eat and all of this happen without indigestion in 20 minutes. That's difficult. So I keep a microwave in my room. And one day I brought my lunch and um, it was something that I really wanted. I heated it and uh, my team was in my room. We were talking. And as I turned from the microwave, I bumped into a desk and my food hit the floor. And I said, oh, bless his name. And one of my teammates said, I wouldn't have said that. I said, but... I do bless his name. I said, that's all I can say. I got to give him glory. Now, I'm not happy because my food is on the floor. Thereby, I've got to find something else, a bag of chips or something. And it was something I really wanted. But I'm grateful. Listen, listen. I'm grateful that what was on the inside was the first thing that came out. Because Amen. situations and life it, it doesn't choose a time when you're feeling really good and you have all of your these and thous and, and all of that in place. Situations happen sometimes when you're already a little bit rushed in a thing. When you're already maybe just a little bit agitated, 
uh, uh-huh. uh, situations happen and, and they come about in such a way sometimes that you feel caught off guard. You feel like you've been punked. You feel like, well, where did this come from? And if we're not mindful, watch me, if we're not mindful, and if the word is not down on the inside, your testimony will not be to the kingdom or it won't be to the kingdom of God. Let's go there. It'll be to a kingdom, but it won't be to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. All right. So number one, number one, let's recount. We must be first partakers. We can't expect people to do what we're not willing to do. Amen. Number two, we must teach. Um, our teaching must be intentional. It must be consistent. It must be repetitive. We must do the same thing all the time with our teaching. Our teaching has to, in order for it to have an impact, what we say must be consistent with what we do, must be consistent with what we write, must be consistent with how we act. It must be consistent throughout. Number three, keep the word before you. Get the word down on the inside because there is no substitute for it. Oops, I didn't mean to say that. It's already out there. It is already out there. Amen, somebody? And number four, in verse nine, verse nine says, write them on the door post, door post of your house and on your gates. Now, don't do like my brother did many, many years ago in my townhouse. And when I walked in, he had used a permanent marker and written several scriptures on my white walls. Don't do that. Not unless you're going to uh, get somebody to stencil the scriptures on your wall. So now I said many, many years ago, which means I wasn't the level of delivered that I am now. So let me tell the truth. So th there was some, there was some clap back from that. <laughs> Amen. That, 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 yeah. Okay. But I bless God that I am a different level of delivered now. Bless his name. But don't try it. But anyway, I am a different level of delivered now. But uh, what we are saying, listen to this. What we're saying is never be ashamed to own your relationship with God. So write it on the doorpost of your heart. Have some distinctive character about your home, about your property, where people understand that they can't misuse your home. They cannot misuse your property uh, for any old kind of behavior. Let them understand that because you belong to God, that everything that touches you belongs to God. Have enough courage. Listen, it takes courage uh, to set people down. Some folk don't know how to set you down or how to stop a behavior when it, it seems to go out of control and you're in their environment. Some of us don't have a problem with that. But what we are saying is you cannot uh, uh, be so passive that you allow people to mistreat or bring um, bring unknown behaviors, behaviors that don't glorify God in your dwelling. And so we got to be mindful that not only do we belong to God, but if we really, really, really embrace this and take it seriously, then I consecrate everything that touches me. So everything that touches me and everything that's mine belongs to God as well. And I'm going to need you to know it. I'm going to need you not to do anything or think you can do anything, not just with my temple, but with my property that I wouldn't do. Write it on the doorpost of your heart. 
there ought to be some indication that Christ abides where you abide. Some indication. I don't think we have to spill uh, red paint or blood on the door now, but there ought to be some indication that he abides there. Amen. I be believe that the, the blood on the doorpost at this point uh, in our New Testament um, day is going to be more figurative than literal. So you're not going to have to, you know, kill the fatted calf and and put the blood on the door. Amen. Somebody bless his holy Amen. Amen. And righteous name. Listen. 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 Verses one through nine must become a pattern of our lifestyle in order to possess the promised land. And so let's go to the scripture real quick. We're just about done. We're getting ready to get out of here. I've got a second service in Surrey today and we are observing um, Lady Giants in the 757. And so the Lord has given us a celebration type service. And so we need you to be praying. But listen, in the chapter that we're ministering out of chapter number six, re listen to this. Verse number 10 says, the Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestor. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with huge prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly mm, stocked with goods you did not produce. Uh -huh. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig. And you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful, listen, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Be careful, men and women of God. Be careful not to forget how you got there. Be careful uh, not to fill up so much on the richness of God's blessing. Uh, because it's coming, because he made a promise. Uh, be careful not to fill up on it so much that you forget to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Be careful not to be so inundated and overwhelmed and uh, mesmerized by uh, the richness of God's blessing uh, that you forget to uh, plant these things, these seeds, and these commandments into your children, that they will plant them into their children. Be careful uh, not to be so overwhelmed and so uh, joyful and so happy about the richness of God's blessing uh, that you forget to uh, teach them in a way that it will stick. Be careful. Hallelujah. Glory. Be careful. And so what God has a promise, what he has promised you and what he has promised me, what he has promised our family, what he has promised us as a heritage. It will be, but be careful because just as he has promised it and just as he has allowed, he allowed Moses to drill down on this information and to give it over and over and over again uh, in different forms and in different ways to the children, this new generation of Israel. Uh, he is making uh, this word relevant in our presence right now for a reason, because we are about to cross over into what God has promised. The drill down is for us as well. That when uh, we, the door is opened and, and we begin to move in and the heaven is open above us and God begins to reign 
immeasurably upon us that we do not forget that it is only because of God that this thing has happened. It is only because of God that we lived to see it. It is only because of God, watch this, that we didn't have a sentence of Moses likened unto Moses to see the promise but not possess the promise upon us. It is only because of the grace and mercy of an all-wise, all-knowing, all-merciful God <laughs> that yeah, we get come the through. opportunity to possess it and occupy it. And so when the time comes, don't forget. Remember, there are two great commandments. All 10 are lumped together in two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. And the second is as unto the first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Amen. the Lord. Amen. Come on and bless Glory God. Come on and bless Glory. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless it. Hallelujah. Listen, Glory. listen. Thank, Thank you. you. There are a couple more things that I believe that the Lord will allow us to uh, expound upon and stretch in Bible study. So if you uh, can work your schedule out, and, 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 and find your way into Bible study on Wednesday. Come on, join us uh, for Bible study and let's see what thus saith the Lord. Let's see what else uh, the Lord has to say. And let's see, listen, let's see what has been turning over and over in your belly between now and Wednesday. Do you understand that uh, Wednesday is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? What is that? 24 times 372 hours? God can do a lot in 72 hours. He can do a lot in 72 hours. You can walk with an understanding in 72 hours that you didn't have uh, an hour ago. He can give enlightenment and revelation in 72 hours that will blow your mind. So bring your blown mind and your revelation to Bible study and let's unpack the word together. Amen. Amen. Listen, perhaps Amen. there's someone Amen. in our listening audience on today that uh, desires prayer. Perhaps you have been coming, you've been going to um, a church somewhere, you've been stopping by um, our worship and uh, you keep feeling this tug in your spirit. Today's a good day to respond to the tug. Today's a good day to respond to what it is God is saying concerning your life. Today's a good day to try Jesus. And so we offer Christ to you. If that is you, type salvation in the chat or type salvation in the feed if you're on Facebook. Our ministers, our deacons, our technicians are watching our watch parties and they will bring that information forward. Perhaps uh, you receive Christ but life uh, kept happening and uh, you find yourself distant or disconnected, today's a good day to reconnect. If that's you, <clears throat> excuse me, type recommit. Perhaps uh, you desire to have a church family. I see some names popping up um, in, the, uh, in the feed. We're gonna put them in the, uh, put them in the atmosphere in just a moment. Um, perhaps you're looking for a church home. Uh, you have been, the Lord has, has alerted you that this is a new season, a, a season that he's doing something different and he's moving you. Uh, might you consider holy and whole life-changing ministries? This is a family that the Lord has put together as a branch of Zion. So type join. If you desire a uh, prayer, individual prayer. Our technicians are available, uh, but you have to be on uh, the Zoom. Uh, technicians are available to put you in a one-to-one -one, uh, virtual altar call with one of our ministers or one of our deacons that will pray you through. Amen.
Come on and bow your heads with us. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you for your word on today. Thank you for uh, just re uh, committing us and, and, and rebooting us and bringing us to a point of realization that our commitment must be wholehearted. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you would continue to work in us, that you would continue to work on us and that you would continue to work through us. We ask in the name of Jesus that is as you allow each one of us to be a teacher, that you would help us, oh God, to teach not just in word, but in deed to teach in action and to teach in demonstration what it is uh, that we believe about your word. And so God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those who are putting their names in the chat, uh, asking for prayer for uh, various situations, those who are going into surgery, coming out of surgery, those who are uh, resting on the side of having lost a loved one, so they're in a season of bereavement, those who uh, have illnesses in their bodies. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would show up on the scene and that you would be a banner for those who need a banner, that you would be uh, a healing for those who need healing, that you would be peace for those who need peace that you, oh God, would be a way made for those who need a way made. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would simply throw your weight around in our various situations and that God, you would get the glory from it. Lord, we thank you for all things because you do all things well. We ask now for a special blessing upon uh, Pastor Michelle and uh, Anna as they shall be traveling home uh, in hours or in a few days as they shall be coming back uh, to their home base, that you would grant them safe passage and safe travel. God, we give you glory for all things. We believe to see your goodness in the land of the living. And we ask all of these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> amen, 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 amen. We certainly invite amen. you to uh, be a blessing to the ministry. We invite you to give. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those of you who are members to honor uh, your commitment to the kingdom uh, by the giving of your tithe and your offering. Those of you who are friends of um, Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries, uh, that you would follow the leading of the Lord and that you would sow as the Lord gives, um, makes available opportunity and resources and that you would do it knowing that you're sowing into good ground. We bless God for you on today. We look forward to worshiping with you very, very soon. We look forward to Wednesday night Bible study, next Sunday worshiping, but Resurrection Sunday is upon us. And so we invite you, if you have a way to get to where we are, I promise you, the feast of the Lord is going on. I promise you, you can get your praise on and I promise you, you can get a breakthrough. You just got to come wanting. All you need is a willing spirit and wanting something from God and you will leave with what you need. Amen. So prepare to come worship with us. We are making preparation to be at Riverside High School to worship in person on March the 31st, which is Resurrection Sunday. Come enjoy the feast of the Lord. Until then, we love you as unto the Lord. Amen. Come on, there's only one way to leave a whole and whole service, a whole and whole gathering, and that is recognizing this one thing. Uh, we serve a God who's able. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. And so come on, unmute everybody. Let's charge the atmosphere. Let's put the devil on notice and hey. help us to understand that we understand that we are ever what? Going forward, 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 for